Hey, what's up Blender users, I'm Jonathan, and in today's video we will take a quick look at real life kit bashing. But what do I mean by that? Well, about two months ago a few Blender add-ons popped up which allowed you to import Google Maps data into your scenes. The one we will be using today is called Maps Models Importer, with which you can import data captured with render docs into Blender 2.8 and onwards. Up until now I have only seen people importing single landscapes and mostly only viewport renders. So let's change that. If you want to know how to set up the export environment, you can watch one of these videos. Oh and by the way, if you enjoy my content, consider subscribing, because I upload a new video every Saturday. And with that said, let's get straight into the tutorial. Of course, for this real life or landscape kit bashing, we will need assets. To get these, you will need to install a program called RenderDoc, inject yourself into a Google Chrome process, and then search for Google Maps. This will allow you to export satellite data as 3D files. And because Google has 3D scanned most parts of the world, we can actually use these in Blender. Now, let's find some cool locations to kit bash with. One mountain I really like is the Matterhorn, and you can actually pan around it by holding down Control and left click dragging. And yeah, this is a really nice mount, especially for 3D scenes. So how do we export this? Well, we just pick a frame, just like this, and then we can click on Capture Frames Immediately or Capture After Delay. And I will choose a slight delay and press on that. Now, it is really important that you move your viewport, because only that way you will actually export 3D data. And now you can right click save and save this file as an .rdc file. Now the second location we will pick is Manhattan, because this city is 3D scanned pretty well. You can actually see that by just scrolling in, and now all the buildings will load. And again you can pick a frame, for example this one, or if you want a bigger one, you can scroll out and also capture this and save it. After you have exported all the areas you want to kit bash with, you can open Blender and install the add-on which is also linked in the video description. Firstly, let's delete everything and now with the add-on installed, we can click on import Google Maps Capture, which is the .rdc file, and locate our files. The import process can take a while, so this is nothing to be worried about. And now you can see that our mesh is loaded and we have the Matterhorn in our 3D scene. Also, if we go to Material Preview, you can see that all the materials are there. Now the one downside to this technique is that all the lighting is baked in. You can clearly see all the shadows of the Matterhorn in the texture. You might be able to delight this mesh with Agisoft Delighter, but this is nothing I have played around with, so this is up to you. Now let's clean this up a little bit. You can see that this mesh was imported in these rectangles. This is okay and fine, but of course we don't need all this geometry on this side right here, so we can delete it. So let's pick a frame we like, for example this one, and for me the field of view is a bit too large, so let's press W, camera lens angle, and choose a field of view we like, for example this. And now let's add in our city. But before we do that, let's select all the different meshes, press M and give it its own collection. And now that our scene is a bit more clean, we can import our city. Sometimes, when importing a second RDC file, you can run into this problem, where all the meshes are misaligned. I haven't found any way to resolve this issue. If you run into this, you can just open another blend file, import the second mesh into there, and then append it in your final scene. And this is what I will be doing now. So, delete everything, and I will go to File, Append, and append all the objects from this scene. And now you can see this has worked correctly. Let's also bring these into their own collection, and I'm just gonna call it city, just like this. And we can now, for example, move them around into our scene, for example, right here. Now we can see that our mountain is surrounded by a nice city. And if we go into the material preview mode, we can see that we get this. Of course, this is not perfect, and you might want to pick a different frame, for example, right here, where you don't see any buildings intersecting with the mountain. But for the sake of this tutorial, this is enough for me. So now let's work on the scene, because we can still see some ugly detail in the parts which are near the camera. The further away the assets are, the better they look. So to change this we can add some depth field. Again press W and now choose this distance pick option and click on the mountain. And now in the camera settings we can enable depth of field and for example turn the f-stop down a little bit to blur the foreground. Now let's go to cycles and add some lighting. For this let's enable the dynamic sky add-on and once it's enabled you can click on create right here and under the world options you can choose dynamic and if we go into the rendered mode you can see that we get a nice sky. 
What I like to do is remove all the clouds just because I don't really like the look of them. Okay, now we have some nice lighting. But there's one thing I want to do and this is to add some ground mist or fog. For this, let's add in a cube and scale it up so everything in our scene is included into its mesh. Let's give it a new material and add in a principal to volume node. Control shift click on it to directly connect it to the material output node. Of course, you can only do this with a node wrangler add-on enabled. If we go into rendered mode now, you can see that nothing is really there. This is all just a dense block. So let's work on the density. For the density, I want to add in a gradient texture and we can also preview it on the side of the mesh. With Ctrl T, you can add in these two nodes and let's rotate our gradient by 90 degrees on the Y axis. Let's also add in a color ramp, set it to ease and drag it up. We can now control the density with this color ramp. So let's just plug this into the density input and delete this viewer node. Okay, you can see that we have to invert this color ramp and we can just do this by flipping it. Now this already looks great. I only want to up the color to have the volume be completely white. And in the side view, we can see that the volume is way too high. So let's drag this black value further to the left to adjust this ground fog. If you want it to be more dense, you can, for example, select this white handle and give it a value of above one, for example, two. This is what I did for the thumbnail render. And yeah, this is basically it. This is how you can create beautiful landscapes in a matter of minutes with a kind of kit bashing process. If you found this tutorial helpful, consider liking and subscribing and we will see us in the next video.